Good morning and welcome to my Wireshark tutorial class. Uh, what I'm going to show you within this tutorial are tricks that I use uh, to decode uh, Samsung Office Serve uh, traces to be able to detect uh, one-way audio, no audio, uh, and to get just a general understanding of the type of traffic uh, that the system is being exposed to. Um, the items that I'll show you within this tutorial are just tricks that I've picked up along the way. Uh, there may be better ways to do those. There may uh, you know, be easier ways to do those, but this is what I use, uh, and I wanted to pass that along to anybody that may also want to use those. So with that being said, here we go. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open a trace file. And I'm going to go open this OAS Capture 1 because I've already pre-screened it and I know it does have good examples of one-way audio. Uh, so right now we're just all we've done so far is opened a, a raw capture file. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that I've modified uh, my view from the default view and I've added the source port and the destination port. Uh, this makes it real easy for me to be able to see where the traffic's coming from and where it's going to because most often uh, what I've experienced within tech support is that the traffic is being blocked based on the port number. Uh, so it's for me it's very critical to be able to see what that port number is. Uh, in order to make that kind of modification, if you wanted to do the same thing, uh, you can just right click here at the top on the title bar and we're going to go down to... Uh, column preferences. And once you're within column preferences, uh, you'll see that I've added uh, two new fields, uh, source port and destination port. And I use the unresolved uh, names because a lot of times if the port matches something that's industry available, uh, then it'll put uh, uh, the industry name up there for that port, such as you know, 3389's remote desktop. Well, Samsung may use 3389 for something else, and it's just more confusing if you actually have it resolve the name for purposes of just decoding Samsung traces. Uh, so with that being said, I just use uh, leave the ports as unresolved. So feel free to do those. Uh, add those to your screen. I would highly recommend it. I also uh, show VLAN IDs. Uh, which is another uh, piece of information that I like to look at to see how the audio traffic is flowing. Um, you can apply those and just click OK. Since I already have them applied, I'm going to click Cancel here. So once I get a trace, the first thing that I like to do is go to Statistics and go to Summary. And this will give me a summary of what I'm looking at. So if the issue was reported to have happened, uh, on March the 6th at 12:14, then I can take a look at the time here that's captured in this uh, in this summary, and see that 12:14 does fall within between the first and last packet. If it falls outside of this time period, I'm not going to be able to see it within this capture. So that's always first and foremost the first thing that I check is does the capture uh, cover the period in which the problem was reported? Okay. Once we're past that, then the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and take a look at the endpoints. And what this does is it analyzes all the traffic and breaks it down and gives me a list of everything that I can expect to find within this trace. Um, on the first screen here, this is Ethernet, so the hardware address, so MAC address. And uh, I see that I, I do have some Samsung gear here uh, and a sonic wall firewall and a couple of other items here. Uh, the ones I'm going to be most interested in are going to be the Samsung Gear and potentially the, the Sonic Wall Firewall. So that breaks it down by MAC address. You can also look at it by IP address, see the same information. And by if there were TCP packets in, in this trace, it would show the TCP here. Uh, there's only UDP packets. Uh, so here I can break it down. And the important part about this screen is that I can see uh, see the audio ports that are being used and for every even port that's in the 30,000 port range then like 30,042, 46, 50, 52 each one of those represents a new call on the MGI card because the way the MGI card numbers the port is every time you make a call the increment goes up by two. Now you will also see uh, comp accompanied with 
the even ports, you'll see the odd ports. The odd ports are going to be the RTCP traffic. At this point in this tutorial, we won't cover any information regarding those ports, but we will concentrate on the uh, on the even number ports, 30,042, 46, 50, 52, 54, and 56. Okay, so. What this is telling me is I definitely do, I was able to capture uh, MGI traffic. I do see the ports here. Uh, back on the Ethernet screen, I do see that we have Samsung gear, and I can even go as far as to match uh, the MAC addresses uh, to the actual pieces of hardware to confirm uh, that that's actually what I wanted to trace. Okay. So... I'm going to pretend with this particular trace that I wasn't provided any background information and that I was uh, just going to scan the trace to see what I could find wrong with it. Um, the first thing I'm going to start with is we obviously, I can see the 30,000 uh, ports being used, so I know I have MGI traffic. Uh, so what I'm going to do is see where is the first occurrence of an MGI call. The reason I'll know that is it'll be the lowest uh, even number 30,000 port range port that I can find. So going back to statistics and go to endpoints. I'm going to go over here to UDP and I'm going to sort by port number. And then I'm going to scroll down. And so we're at 29,000. The first one that I can find is 30,042. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close up. And here, I can type in a filter to filter out all of these traffic. Down here, we know we have 70,000 packets. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a filter of... Okay, so the filter to view just the UDP traffic for the first call uh, that we're going to put in is going to be UDP.port equals equals 30,042. I'm going to apply that, and it's going to filter out everything that's not related to this particular call. Um, the first thing that I quickly glance to see is that I see that uh, the destination port that we're speaking with is 9000. 9000 tells me that we're dealing with an ITP key set or an SMT key set. And I do see that I see two-way traffic because they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And... Uh, so this particular call looks good from uh, just a general overview. A couple of other tricks that I can do is if you see right now is trying to decode this traffic as IPv4, um, which is fine, but I'm also going to further in or make the protocol a little bit more specified, and we're going to go to uh, RTP. So down here we're going to select right-click and select decode as, and I'm going to change this to RTP. Okay, and apply. And now you will see that we, uh, we're looking at traffic that's a little more oriented for uh, the voice side. So uh, if I look down here in the more specific detailed view uh, as we're looking at the packets, then I can see different information, the source port, source address, source MAC address, um, destination port, destination MAC address, destination port. And I see uh, that we're using G711 codec. Uh, so a lot of good information can be found after I decode it as RTP traffic. Okay, so another uh, method that we could do to look at this stream a little bit further is I'm going to right click on the RTP traffic. And I want to say, I apologize, uh, we're going to go to telephony, and we're going to go to RTP, and we're going to go to stream analysis. And what this does is it uses some built-in tools to kind of evaluate the RTP traffic uh, and let you know, uh, you know if you're experiencing packet loss or packets out of order. Um, and for this particular tutorial, what we're concentrating on is we just want to see if we have, uh, you know, dropped packets or if we're uh, looking at a one-way audio scenario. Uh, right here, we can see lost RTP packets in the stream is zero, so that's uh, very good. Um, the other thing that I can do from this screen is we're going to go ahead and go to player and click decode. 
and it will actually show me the channels are set up. If there were no audio packets whatsoever for one side of the conversation, one of these two screens would not be here. What we're looking at is we're looking at the send side and the receive side. Um, so f for this particular one, if the source port is 30,042, that means that call, this traffic is the transmit from the phone system to the endpoint. And since in this particular case in the bottom uh, section here, the traffic is destined to 30,042, that's inbound to us. So that's our receive traffic. So you've got your transmit and receive traffic here. Um, these particular uh, streams, what we're seeing is uh, while the streams are set up, the channels are set up, the ports are set up, the networking piece is set up, um, either nobody's speaking or it's on mute. Uh, because all of the channels are set up, there's just no conversation being held. Um, as we go through, I'll find one in just a minute to show you that actually does have uh, an audio conversation in it. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could go ahead and hit play. And you can actually play uh, the call back as long as there's uh, they're not using secure RTP. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so we see that we have both sides of the conversation. There's no packet loss. So for this particular call, uh, we are going to say that we do have two-way audio. Okay, so since the port uh, will increment in by two, then we'll go ahead and skip to 30,044, and this will show us our uh, next phone call off of that particular MGI card. Uh, looks like there's no traffic available for that particular call, so we're going to go ahead and skip to 30,046. Okay, and here we're seeing the same thing. We're seeing 30,046 to 9,000. So uh, based on the ports, I could verify this using MAC addresses, but just based on looking at the port, I see a conversation between an ITP key set or an SMT key set and uh, one of our MGI cards or an OAS card. Uh, so this one looks like we're good here. We have two-way audio. We see send-receive traffic. So we're going to continue to, to move forward to 30,048. Uh, no traffic available for that call, so we're going to go 30,050. Okay, and here we are seeing um, one-way traffic. As you can see here, we have, uh, we have all the traffic headed to uh, the... Uh, 208 address, which the MAC address is being decoded as a sonic wall firewall. So from our MGI card uh, to the sonic wall firewall, we're transmitting traffic, but this capture does not show any audio traffic coming back towards us. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, decode this as RTP traffic, just as we did with the previous call. Apply. Click OK. Okay, so now we have, we see that the codec is G711, and we still have all the information about the IP address. And now we're going to go to telephony, RTP, stream analysis. And if I look at player, decode, you'll notice now that I have audio, you can see uh, that there's a conversation going on here all the way through the call. But if you notice, I only have one window this time. That's going to mean that I only have one side of the conversation. So this is a clear example of one-way audio. Well, guys, this uh, tutorial is running a bit long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it short there. But just wanted to kind of go through some of the methods that we use in tech support to decode the Wireshark traces that you send in. Uh, I look forward to putting some additional videos out. Uh, if you have any suggestions, be sure and just let your tech support representative know. Have a good one.